So does your RV refit have these tiny little worthless fans that moves almost no air at all? Well, mine does, so I decided to do something about it. friends forgive the noise of the AC fan we are doing this video in the middle of the summer with the noisy RV AC on um, so we're going to replace our tiny little fan in the bathroom with the hang vortex 2 fan upgrade kit as you can see the, the box I got was a little damaged from Amazon but once we opened it up we found there was no damage to the item itself um, the, I guess the difference between the Vortex and the Vortex 2 is that we have the ability to have multiple speeds and a reverse setting I'm not sure if a reverse setting is absolutely necessary but I figured it would be a cool little extra to have so I went ahead and spent the extra money for the adjustability uh, what we see here is our instructions we have our little parts kit that is the knob for opening the vent as you can see, uh, I was relieved to see that the fan and the cover was uh, white and uh, not beige, like it sort of looked in some of the ads that I'd seen, because uh, I was a little concerned about the, I wanted to get as much light coming through that as possible. I uh, was concerned that you would have less light than with the original fan, because with very, very small fan, gave us a lot of room for light to come in. I wanted the vent to continue to be a light source because we have no window in the bathroom. And although we do have lights, it's just nice to have the natural light coming in through the vent. So I decided on going with this route because it was a bit cheaper than going with some of the fantastic fans or some of the other higher end fans on the market. Plus this allowed me to just replace the fan and the screen itself without having to replace the entire vent cover and climb up on the roof and take care of all that. This is something I was able to do inside, uh, hopefully give a significant upgrade in the airflow without having to completely redo the system. So the first step is to remove the garnish. So how do I know that this thing is called the garnish? Well, that's what it says in the instructions. So uh, move the four screws, one on each corner. And of course, I should have removed the shower curtain first thing before I even got started. Yeah, got that out of the way. This thing's a little bit easier to work there. A little bit easier to see what I'm doing. crank handle. That is how we raise and lower the vent cover. One simple screw holds that in place. Screw out, just work it right off. Should pop out pretty easily. Next thing, we've got the screen frame. And let's go ahead and disconnect the power from the fan switch here. I'm just unplugging these two wires. The fan just pops off. There's really nothing that holds that in place. Now comes the challenging part. We do have this little motor mount piece. Uh, that is riveted on 
to the bar that holds vent cover crank mechanism in place. Uh, my first attempt to get that out was to just drill out the rivets. Didn't have much luck with that. Very quickly determined that that wasn't going to work. So my next option was just to bend it to the point where it breaks and we'll just pull it off. We really don't have to remove this part, but it does. Uh, I wanted to make it look as professional as possible and uh, allow for as much airflow as we can get through this thing. The bar going across the center does need to remain in place because, uh, because that is uh, the crank mechanism for the roof vent. see there we go there is our motor throw that away we don't need that anymore let's go ahead and trim up these wires here don't need to be quite so long so we took a little bit of material off got them ready to go Another mistake I made here was using wire nets to connect these. Now, the uh, the replacement fan actually did include these little wire nets, but I've since learned that they're uh, really not adequate for RV use because with all the rattling and vibrations that go on inside of a of an RV, sometimes these things will just vibrate themselves loose. So there are, are better other options, but. That's what I had, that's what I used, that's what was included with the kit, and so far I've had no problem, but uh, you might want to investigate some more secure methods. What do you know? Turns right on with no problem. This actually turned out to be one of the most difficult parts of the installation is trying to get everything lined up, especially where the um, crank handle was connected to the crank mechanism. There's two different spots that are available and it comes set up with the um, gear drive uh, in one location, but if that doesn't line up, you have to pull it out and switch it to the other location, which is what I found out I had to do. So I had to go and disconnect the wires that I had just connected, unscrew the two screws on the front face, of the Vortex 2 fan that allowed us to release the gear drive there it is just pops right out underneath there you can see we've got two holes uh, the first one right next up next to the fan I had to move it to the second hole to line it up better with my crank arm assembly. Pop the two screws back in on the front face. And through the magic of editing, it has been rewired. We are popping it right back into place. Again, lining everything up is one of the more difficult parts of this job. We've got loose wires that need to be moved away from the fan. We've got to line up the two mounting holes as well as the gear.
gear drive, the gear drive knob. Once you've got that knob in place, though, you're mostly there. Get that screw in to keep that sucker in place. This is definitely one of those jobs when having two people or three hands would be a huge help. Unfortunately, this one turned out to be a one-man job for me, but I uh, was able to get through it with just two hands. Now, these screws mount directly into the bracket that holds the crank arm assembly. Just one screw in each side. That's the only thing that's, hold, that's held in place, that and the screw through the crank handle or the crank knob official terminology check make sure everything still works yes it does moving quite a bit of air which was the whole point of the operation Next, we reinstall the garnish. Fairly easy, just uh, put the four screws back in. Make sure you keep you those original screws because the uh, kit did not include extra screws. These are the four original screws that held the garnish, garnish in place. Then final step is to replace the screen frame. It just snaps in place, twist it in. Let's turn this on, make sure everything still works. What do you know? It's like magic. Not really a difficult job. If you're looking for a project that will help you move a lot of air through your trailer without having to run that energy-consuming AC, I highly recommend the Hang Vortex 2, especially if you have one of those tiny little fans, or if you have no fans at all. Um, now, if you don't have a fan, there is a good chance you may have 12-volt wiring uh, near the vent that can be accessed, but it's, it's a little more tricky if that's the case. It definitely is much easier if you've already got the wires there from... Uh, one of the other smaller fans. So um, anyways, I appreciate you guys checking out this video. If there's anything else you guys would like to see, uh, let me know. Um, our, my plan is for you know campground reviews, do-it-yourself tips, uh, installation product reviews, uh, anything you would like to see from us, we'll give it a shot. And uh, if you like what we're doing, kindly subscribe and tell your friends. We appreciate it. Have a great day.